Do you get stuck in perfectionism and you just can't seem to move your business forward? Watch to the end to get my four easy steps to overcome perfectionism forever. Rosie Frey here bringing you the Mindset Pine Success and today I want to share with you how you can overcome perfectionism so that you can become more successful in your life and in your business. For the best advice on succeeding in business, subscribe to my channel and be sure to hit the bell as well to be notified when I have new videos every single week. If you struggle with perfectionism, by the end of this video, you're going to know the four easy steps that I've shared with over 10,000 other female entrepreneurs just like you to help them move forward in their business and in their life. So step number one. Step number one is all about understanding perfectionism. Where does perfectionism come from? Perfectionism comes from our deepest, deepest fear. And our deepest fear is that we're not enough and we won't be loved. Now, think about when you were a baby. You relied on your mom or your dad or whoever was looking after you to feed you, to dress you, to clothe you, to do everything that would keep you safe and keep you alive. And so perfectionism often comes from us being afraid of upsetting or disappointing our parents. So I've got a question for you. When you were a child, which of your parents' love did you crave the most? Not which one did you love the most or who loved you the most, but whose love did you crave the most? I'll let you decide who that was. And then, who did you have to be to be loved by them? I'll let you think about that as well for a second. This could be that you needed to be quiet, you needed to be noisy, you needed to be successful, you needed to be good. There could be any number of words that you could use to describe who you had to be to get their love. And so often what we find is that when we are an adult and we're free and we're, we're looking after ourselves, we're still running these old childhood patterns from our childhood, which are keeping us in that bond, that, that sort of energetic bond that we have with our parents. And whenever we stray away from that, so for example, if you were told you had to be a good girl and then you're doing something that makes you feel a little bit naughty, well, then you're going to try to sabotage that. And that's often where perfectionism comes in is that it's a sabotage. So when you are actually aware of the true fear, the real underlying reason behind the perfectionism, then it becomes very easy to actually shift that pattern. If you want to go through these journaling questions, you can get the PDF below this video. There's a link below the video in the description. It's going to give you free access to that and you can go through them and journal on these in your own time. Now, step number two follows on from step number one, meaning that perfectionism is often a mask for fear might not be from your parents, but it could be another fear. So what are the negative consequences of you failing? Failing in your business, failing with a certain project. What are the negative consequences that are making you feel perfectionist about this specific thing? You can write them down in journal. And remember, of course, I'm gonna give you all these journaling questions in a free PDF that you can get via the link below this video in the description. So make sure that you get that there. So what are the consequences of you failing? But here's another question which is really interesting. What are the negative consequences of you succeeding in your project or in your business? And this one's even more important because often we're holding ourselves back because we're afraid of what we might become by actually succeeding. What will happen when we have so much money? What will happen when we have so much fame or so much impact? What will happen when we get that much acclaim or you know, win the, the award or whatever it might be? What will change in your life? So some people are afraid people might start asking them for money. Some people are afraid that they might become a public figure and have no more privacy. So there's often something going on in your mind around the negative consequences of succeeding. So what could they be for you? That's another great journaling question. And then to help your brain move forward and stop getting stuck in these fears, you can ask yourself, well, how could I mitigate this if it actually happened? So if I did become really, really rich and people started asking me for money, how could I mitigate that? Could I learn how to say no? Could I learn how to set better boundaries? You become one step ahead of the game, right? You start to think, well, if this happened, then I would do X. And once you have this kind of mental plan in place, then you're able, your brain is able to calm down and say, okay, we've got this covered. And you're able to move forward and not freak out so much about your perfectionism. So as you can see, once you have the mental reasons behind why you are being a perfectionist, it becomes so much easier to actually unravel that and go into the more pragmatic steps, which is what we're going into in the second half of this video. But can you see how easy it can be to overcome perfectionism? Comment easy in the comments below to let me know. So let's now move on to step three. Step three is a different way of seeing perfectionism. And that is that perfectionism is actually really selfish. 
when you're being a perfectionist, you're focused on yourself and what other people are going to think about your project. So all the attention and focus is on you. But if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a coach or a healer or a yoga teacher, or if you sell some kind of a product, you're selling that product or service to help other people. Other people need whatever it is you have to offer. When you focus on other people, then you're able to flip that around and say, actually, they need me. I need to get a service out there and it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, I remember a few years back, I was launching my first group coaching program. And I'll be honest with you, it was not top quality production. It was really, really basic. It was me sitting, sitting in front of a camera in front of my MacBook with its own internal bait webcam, you know, no, no production, no nothing. And just delivering value, delivering content. Now, the first round I did, I had six women in the program. The second round I did, I had another six women. But with that really, really basic setup, 12 women were able to actually quit their jobs and start their own businesses. If I hadn't actually moved forward, those women wouldn't have actually had that help and they wouldn't be living the lives they're living today. They wouldn't have the freedom. They wouldn't have the ability to generate extra money. They wouldn't have the satisfaction of working in jobs that they love and running businesses that they love. So had I needed to wait until I was perfect, until I was, you know, had everything all professional looking, that wouldn't have happened. And that's the power of really focusing on the other people is saying, they need me, they need me now, I'm going to ship it just as it is because we're always enough just as we are. So now I want to give you some practical tips. And the first one is to set a deadline. So our tasks will fill up whatever time we allow them. So we could be writing a Facebook post for three years if we let ourselves do that, perfecting every single word. Instead, set a deadline. I'm going to have my post written by this time. I'm going to have my book finished within this amount of, you know, many months. I'm going to have my website up and running within X number of weeks. And when you have a deadline, it forces you to ship that product, to finish that, to complete that project at that date. And I've got another tip for you. If you actually make that deadline public and tell people who you'd be really embarrassed if you actually failed them, so that could be your mentor or your coach, that could be your Facebook following, that could be your clients, whoever it is who's going to have that emotional pull on you, it's actually going to become worse for you to miss that deadline than it's going to be for you to ship a quote unquote imperfect product. So give yourself that deadline and it's going to allow you to move forward and to really chunk things into manageable pieces with a firm, firm end date that you have to actually complete the project by. And remember, of course, Facebook's motto is done is better than perfect. If a massive, massive company like Facebook can take imperfect action, so can you. Now, my second step in this more practical steps is to make a plan and chunk your big, big project down into small, manageable tasks. So for example, if you wanted to build a website, that would be chunked down into potentially hiring a website developer. It could be chunked down into writing the copy for your website or writing the copy for one page of your website. It could be getting the photo shoot done to take the pictures of your on your website, etc., etc., etc. So plan that into chunks and then put those chunks on a calendar. So whatever that task is, the photo shoot is gonna be on Monday morning. The copywriting for the sales page is going to be on Tuesday afternoon. And when you plan it like that, it gives you, again, the sense of understanding where you are in the project and being able to work through that, as opposed to just seeing it as this massive, massive, overwhelming thing that you don't know how to even move forward with. And then the third step on this more practical uh, example is to run with what's known as an MVP, a minimum viable product. That's what I did as I told you with my group coaching back in the day. I was literally recording those webinars and those training modules the week they were due to be delivered. Why? Well, number one, because I was selling the program before I actually created the product because I needed to know that there was actually demand for it before I went and put hundreds of hours into developing content. But more importantly, I was able to do this, and it was more important for me to do this, because my clients were able to then influence how the modules were shaped. Their questions each week in our coaching calls allowed me to actually figure out really what they needed from me in the next module. So even though I had a curriculum in mind before I started the program, I was able to move forward in chunks, like I was saying before, and just focus on one thing every single week. 
So a minimum viable product is what is the bare bones, the, the bare minimum that is acceptable for me to actually launch this product. So for example, it could be just writing the curriculum of your, of your group coaching program. It could be a beta test of the, the software that you're launching. So creating the minimum viable product allows you to have the, really the bare, bare minimum that will make it functional. And then you can add in all the branding and the bells and the whistles and everything else as this program, as this product or program starts getting traction. Now, the beauty of this is that it allows you to get feedback on this first version from real customers, and then you're able to tweak that to make it better. So it's the, I think the thing with perfectionism is that we think that we need to create something that's perfect, that's finished, that's complete, that is, there's nothing else left to do. But the thing is, that's your perception of what's perfect. Your customer's perception of what's perfect could be vi vastly, vastly different. And so it's important to go out with a minimum viable product, get feedback on it, and then iterate and tweak and iterate and make it better. And that's exactly what I did with my group coaching program back in the day. The first time I ran it, it was six months long. As I said, I was filming those videos. The second time I ran it, I tried it at different price points. I had a, a self-study version, I had a private coaching version, and I had the group coaching version as well. And then the third time I ran it, I actually extended that into a year-long program. I had my videos professionally filmed, and I made things much, much more polished, shall we say. So now you know exactly how you can overcome perfectionism and start taking imperfect action to move your business forward. Because remember, momentum breeds momentum. So how will you start implementing this into your day-to-day -day business life? Well, the first thing to do is to download my free journaling questions PDF, which is below this video. And that's gonna walk you through the exercises that I explained in this video. And the second step, of course, is to get into imperfect action, to set the deadlines, to chunk down the tasks, and to get moving. So if you like this video, click like below. Please remember to subscribe. We have new videos on business success coming out every single week. Share it with your friends and your colleagues. And if you found this video helpful, comment helpful below. And I will see you very soon.